Uh, the next speaker is Liz Parrish. Uh, you can share a screen. Who will speak about the gene therapy to reduce the effects of aging? Liz, Liz. Okay, it's nice to be here. Thank you for having me. So we're going to, if I can get this thing to share. Ah, that's not in the right mode, is it? Let's see. Can you see my screens properly? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Well, it's nice to be here. And as you know, um, first and foremost, uh, BioViva is interested in human data. So we work with a partnership company called Integrative Health Systems, and we work to get that human data. And I'm just going to go a little bit on the overview of how we do that and what it looks to like to participate in something like a gene therapy or regenerative medicine that isn't a regulated technology by the FDA. So number one, there's a lot of progress in this area. So in the gene therapy area alone, we have five regulated technologies through the FDA, now not through my company, but through other companies for things called monogenic disease. But we're seeing the first rise in gene therapy applications and clinical trials that are for aging associated diseases. For instance, there's about eight right now, uh, either running or completed for heart disease. We're more interested in the ones running than the ones that have been completed or terminated. Uh, and in the uh, editing zone, we see sickle cell anemia is making fast strides as a curative uh, effect through gene therapy. And hemophilia A is only being held back by how long the treatment might in fact work. So let's say you're interested in a gene therapy. You want a gene therapy for regenerative medicine. You've run out of options. And this is happening to over 100,000 people today will die of aging. So there are a lot of people running out of options. And so we, we feel that we are meeting the biggest medical unmet need. Well, number one, you need to qualify. You need to talk to a medical doctor. So everyone in our network uh, would deal with a medical doctor and they would get a procedure in a medical hospital and have that huge oversight site. So this isn't uh, your typical biohacking. <laughs> we get uh, put into that bushel uh, quite a bit, but we are not. Um, so you have to uh, qualify. You, we need to understand a comprehensive drug list, medical records. The uh, customer or patient is, that is qualifying then needs to sign a lot of consent forms. They need to understand the technology. They need to look at videos. They need to work with the medical doctor to ensure that they understand the technology and the risk. And then our side comes in, BioViva, Bio and that's data acquisition. So we are looking at a lot of data in these uh, patients. Uh, we are doing a lot of do-it-yourself kits, do-it-at-home uh, clinical kits. Uh, we look at everything from DNA to epigenetics to NAD to telomeres if they apply to that treatment, uh, to proteomics and senescent cells now where we have a way to start to gauge that. And then of course uh, the patient's going to go through a lot of blood work and most likely imaging. So this is serious business. Uh, not only are gene therapies expensive, but the pre and post work you should be prepared for as well. It's quite thorough. Uh, then it comes down to what are you going to be treated with? Um, so in different cases, there would be different therapeutics. Integrative Health Systems working with four different gene therapies now, and that's quickly expanding. And as you'll see, they've become a drug testing platform to help other companies get through, even stem cells and, and, and other regenerative factors. So, um, we recently ran a uh, study, it started last summer for dementia, and I would not be the person that would come and talk about the medical data that was found in that study. It's not done yet. At the eight month mark, we'll be getting the uh, follow-up brain imaging and a slew of tests will come in. We've already got biostatisticians that are starting to analyze uh, the pre-data to the three and six month data. And we'll have a lot more to say about that. And we're kind of excited about it. I mean, we're kind of really excited about it. Uh, right now, it looks like there may have been improvement in five of the patients and one of the patients, maybe not so much. Um, so with gene therapy, there's uh, different uh, uh, effects of your immune system. There's uh, your innate and your adaptive, and there's different levels of immune suppression that has to be given 
in order to uh, sort of uh, skirt around uh, those immune responses. And it may in fact be that in some cases uh, there's a T cell response at about five to six weeks. And that actually is all being dealt with now through the literature and through integrated health systems to make these better. But in all in all, maybe everyone isn't gonna benefit. Um, we'll find out. And we'll be excited to show you that data. Actually, I'll have a doctor talk about that data. I wouldn't be talking about patient data. Uh, so then you go from there to uh, your follow-up, which is going to last for years. Um, you're going to be in communication with a medical doctor quite a bit after taking a gene therapy. Uh, they're available on call 24-7 after, and you are going to be doing a lot of post data. So anything you did before the therapy to qualify for the therapy, you're going to be doing again and many times over. Um, okay, so why would we do this? Because we're very interested in getting human data to help companies move forward, help our own company move forward to uh, FDA trials, right? So we want to get investment in, we want to make um, a better world, we want to actually show that therapeutics work before we try to raise millions and millions of dollars. And I believe that we have already seen that um, in uh, the uh, clinical trials when regenerative medicine sometimes hits it, if the endpoints aren't right, companies lose uh, a lot of clout and a lot of investors' money. Don't want to do that. Where does this end up? It ends up in our research and development. All of the uh, companies that may be looking at uh, drugs through our drug discovery platform in humans uh, own their own data, of course, uh, but the things that we're interested in go into research and development. And of course, what we're most interested in is creating a multi-genetic uh, treatment that will treat biological aging in one treatment. So let's talk about some of the things that we'd want to solve around that area. So right now, we know that if you want to treat aging, you're going to need to do multiple modalities, maybe multiple genes. Well, pretty sure about that. And we want to deliver those genes. So anyone might say, well, you could just use AAV, which is a viral vector delivery method. If people aren't familiar with it, you package a gene in it and you deliver it to the body. That's my, my son's dog barking. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, AAV has some toxicity issues. Uh, we, it used to be the darling of gene therapy, and then it turns out that liver toxicity can happen at higher doses. So let's say you have four gene candidates, you want to take high doses of all of those, what if you could take them in one therapy? Uh, that lowers a lot of the problems, and we were looking for a gene uh, delivery method that could, in fact, do that, uh, deliver really large payloads, maybe the first mini, mini, artificial mini chromosome uh, to treat aging. And we have gotten so lucky uh, through our science that um, I can't talk a lot about it, but you'll be seeing a paper come out in the next couple of months. We're just in review right now. But one thing that we did find was significant life extension with our new uh, delivery method. We saw over 40% uh, extension in mice in one arm of the study and over 37% in the other. And our mice not only lived longer, they looked so good. It was so hard for me for the last two years to not talk about what we were doing. Uh, their blood glucose tolerance was amazing, uh, much like we see in regenerative gene therapies with humans. And we look forward again to showing you that data later when there's enough numbers to do so. Um, they were stronger, uh, they were more active and well, they just seemed flat out heavier, happier. Their mitochondrial function was excellent. As a matter of fact, the mitochondrial function in both arms of the treatment studies, which was two different genes, the mitochondria looked uh, very similar to a young mouse, an eight months mouse. As a matter of fact, the lab technicians had a hard time believing that these mouse, mice were the age that they were. So you know they were wild type mice and that is significant to the study. Okay, so uh, drug testing platform, I'm gonna talk about that really quick because I am going to encourage every biotech company to use this. I don't know what you've heard, uh, but your human data is the most important. It's the most important to your raise and it's the most important to helping the world. The problem is, is that right now, if you go through clinical trials, it's about a 94% failure rate in phase, um, 
phase three if you get there. And as Representative Katie Porter recently said, you know, these big com drug company buyouts, a small company is stifling innovation. So it's making it so that um, small companies who are very agile like ours, the minute they get bought out, they're not quite so agile as you can imagine. And that is bad for humans. Um, let's see. So you can actually save money by knowing how your drug works. It costs a fraction of the cost to bring these drugs to the medical tourism sector uh, and um, increases your chance of success significantly. And if your drug doesn't work, saves you a lot of time to go back to the bench now. Uh, let's see. So finding your endpoints matter. And this helps people. Um, one of the best things that I see, the happiest, uh, the happiest feeling that I get is when we actually talk to the doctors at Integrative Health Systems and their clients, their patients tell them how happy they are to have been able to participate in the future, how happy they are to have been able to maybe have an option when otherwise uh, there was none. So we really have to take that seriously. If you are sitting on a uh, drug that is regenerative, uh, that could save somebody's life, uh, it's a mandate to use those drugs now. But of course, uh, there is the matter of reproducibility. Not every drug can be used in a human. And as a matter of fact, all of the drugs that uh, the gene therapies that we look at at BioViva all have reproducible data between multiple labs that were not uh, related to each other. So that gives us a better uh, outlook look on maybe their safety and efficacy and their readiness for humans. So um, our medical doctors would work with uh, your researchers to build a proper protocol and make sure that it was safe to put in a human to begin with. Again, um, there is a rejection rate that is significant on these. Okay, and then uh, finally, something that we don't like to talk about, but of course you can, we can work with your budget on our side to make it as acceptable as possible. In some cases, patients will pay for therapeutics, although we do like to use um, nonprofits in order to pay for patients to go through therapeutic uh, discovery and trials. And we work with Maximum Life Foundation who has successfully uh, raised money for two different studies. Um, one of them will be the dementia study that you see data on later this year. And I just want to say thank you. Um, you know, your success is the world's success. Uh, so uh, we, we really believe in an expeditious route to get these drugs moving. And I thank you for listening and thank you for having me here. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Uh, so uh, one question, please. Somebody? Oh, sure. Uh, here I am. Yeah, please go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry to interrupt. I just had a question for Liz, and I, I forgot my, my, my mute, uh, my mic was muted. Uh, very simply, these therapeutic drugs would have to be, re would be required to be given on a regular basis throughout life. Are, are you talking about the gene therapies? Um, one of the things that we definitely looked at in this study, this research study that you're going to see that we came out with um, that will be out in journal soon is uh, the ability to reuse uh, gene therapeutics in, in the organism. So uh, that may in, in fact be important. Uh, one thing that, we, that attracted me to the field of gene therapy was the one and done uh, type of background that the technology had. But in fact, that might not work entirely for aging, especially with gene therapies in which we need to target, let's say every cell in the body if we're looking at something like telomere extension. Some of the gene therapies you don't have to. You, you could probably do um, uh, moderate doses and have a whole systemic effect. But when you're looking at uh, uh, something like telomerate reduction, you're looking at hitting as many cells as possible and retreatment may in fact be necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Liz.